everyone in the previous lecture we were talking about oogenesis there we are talking about primordial follicle primary follicle secondary follicle tertiary follicle then matured graafian follicle then ruptured follicle so i tried to keep everything on one board here so let us see so we were telling that oogenesis means it is that process of development of ova or ooted or egg or a matured female gamete this is a process called oogenesis right so how does it starts we tell that in females oogenesis starts before her birth only from the fourth week of her embryonic life only oogenesis will start there we will tell what are the three stages in oogenesis multiplication phase growth phase and maturation phase so till 20 weeks from fourth week till 20 weeks multiplication will happen so what happens in multiplication means the oogonia keep on undergoing mitotic division and they'll make uh, uh, they'll make many oogonia right so these oogonia will be surrounded by spindle shaped granulosa cells the oogonia the ova mother cells are surrounded by spindle shaped granulosa cells then such follicles are called primordial follicles here we can see this is a primordial follicle now this primordial follicle turns into primary follicle it starts growing what is there inside here here oogonia is there and then here it becomes primary oocyte from multiplication phase when it com comes to growth phase vitellin membrane and all gets added up yolk gets added up it grows in size it increases in size then it is called as primary oocyte that primary oocyte the blue colored one inside is primary oocyte will be surrounded by now these spindle shaped cells turn into cuboidal cells now these cuboidal cells which are wrapping the primary oocyte are called primary follicle i showed here the green colored cells are granulosa cells and the inner one is the primary oocyte then such a structure is called primary follicle now this primary follicle starts meiosis 1 means it has entered into the maturation phase the third phase is maturation phase it has entered maturation phase it has started meiosis so what is the ploidy of this primary follicle it is diploid means it has 46 chromosomes so it has started meiosis 1 it has started meiosis 1 it will start prophase 1 in prophase 1 there are five sub stages right leptotene zygotene pachytene diplotene diakinesis it gets arrested in the diplotene stage because of the hormonal production is less lh fsh hormonal production is less what happens the meiosis 1 prophase 1 stage it gets arrested it gets arrested and it will remain as a primary oocyte only it will remain as a primary oocyte only and after 20 weeks from 20 weeks till her birth follicular atresia will start follicles will start degenerating 7 million follicles will come to one or two millions and she is born with one or two a couple of million follicles she is born now from then also from her birth also till she, till she reaches a puberty the age of puberty is 10 to 12 years in girls so 10 10 years or 11 years or 12 years when the girl is matured enough then hypothalamus will produce gonadotropin hormone which comes and activates the pituitary pituitary activates luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone now then the follicle stimulating hormone promotes the development of the follicles promotes the maturation of the follicles we are talking about the maturation phase where the primary follicle will mature and it will become secondary follicle at puberty when lh and fsh pituitary hormones are released follicles gets matured now primary follicle is turning into secondary follicle by making how many changes let us see here now this is a primary oocyte this is also primary oocyte the primary oocyte will be surrounded by vitellin membrane the plasma membrane is called vitellin membrane the space surrounding the vitellin uh, membrane is called as perivitellin space now this is the vitellin membrane and this space this space is called perivitellin space now outside the perivitellin space outside the perivitellin space it will make a zona pellucida layer right so this outside the space is a mucus layer it's a non cellular layer secreted by the granulosa cells this non cellular mucus layer is secreted by these green colored granulosa cells and what are they called they are that layer is called zona pellucida that's called zona pellucida this is a primary oocyte the primary oocyte is wrapped by the vitellin membrane this is perivitellin space and this is a mucus coating 
which is secreted by the granulosa cells. It is called as zona pellucida. Already uh, granulosa cells are there, right? The granulosa cells will become a couple of layers thick. Here one layer only I drawn. Here it became couple of layers of thick. And then it will be surrounded by a basement membrane and that basement membrane will be wrapped by a theca layer. The basement membrane will be further wrapped by a theca layer. So you can see here these red colored cells are the theca layers. When all these changes are happening, then we will tell the primary follicle has transformed into secondary follicle. The primary follicle has transformed into secondary follicle. What is there inside? Primary oocyte here also. Here also it is primary oocyte only. Now again FSH is there. That FSH is still maturing the uh, secondary follicle into tertiary follicle. Now what changes can we see from the secondary follicle to tertiary follicle means like how many are there? At puberty the girl will be left with 60,000 to 80,000 primary follicles in each ovary. In each ovary how many follicles will be there? 60,000 to 80,000 follicles will be there. So a pair of ovaries will be there, right ovary, left ovary. In first month if the ovulation, if the egg is discharged by the right ovary means in the next month ova will be discharged by the left ovary. Third month again by the right ovary means fourth month again by the left ovary. So means at the time uh, every month some 500 follicles will start maturing. How many follicles? Some 500 follicles will start maturing out of which only one follicle will reach to the mature stage. Means all these 500 follicles are taking the follicle stimulating hormone. But that follicle which is having many follicle stimulating hormone receptors on it, that follicle which is having many follicle stimulating hormone receptors on it, it can take more follicle stimulating hormone and it can mature faster. So the remaining follicle since they are not able to take it because the receptors are not there, the other one is taking and it is growing, it is maturing fast. So that will get matured and that will release the egg. The remaining 499 follicles in one month will get degenerated. They will get degenerated. So out of this 60 to 80,000 follicles, every month 500 follicles will come out under the influence of follicle stimulating hormones and they start converting the primary follicle to secondary follicle and tertiary follicle. Now, out of this 500 follicles, only one follicle can get matured enough. Which follicle will get matured enough? That follicle uh, which is having many receptors for follicle stimulating hormone can receive more follicle stimulating hormone, can grow more, can mature more and then it can undergo ovulation. The remaining 499 follicles will undergo atresia, will undergo degeneration, right? So, what changes we can expect from secondary follicle to tertiary follicle means these are the theca cells and this is the follicular cells. The theca cells and follicular cells will respond to follicle stimulating hormone. So in the previous board we have seen green color and red color. Yeah. So in the previous board we have seen that luteinizing hormone will come and it will act on the theca cells. Red color means theca cells. Now the theca cells have cholesterol. This cholesterol will make androgen. Cholesterol will make androgen. This androgen goes into the green colored cells. Green colored cells are follicular cells. This androgen will go from here to here. What is this? This is granulosa cell. So granulosa cells, granules are developing by the follicle stimulating hormone. In the presence of the follicle stimulating hormone, the androgen is converted to female hormone called estrogen. This I told it in the previous lecture also. Now this estrogen helps in development of the follicles. Follicle stimulating hormone and estrogen will help in development of the follicles. Now these follicles, yeah, uh, these follicles, what they will do? This is the primary oocyte. The primary oocyte now under the influence of estrogen, the primary oocyte under the influence of estrogen and follicle stimulating hormone will complete its meiosis 1. It has stopped in prophase 1, right? It will complete its metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1 and it will complete its meiosis 1 and it will form two cells. Now those two cells, one cell is a bigger cell, other cell is a smaller cell. The bigger cell is called as secondary oocyte and the smaller cell is called as first polar body. The smaller cell is called as first polar body. You can see here, this I label it as secondary oocyte and this I am calling it as first polar body. The primary oocyte which is diploid has completed its meiosis 1 division, reduction division. It is an unequal division because it is making a bigger cell and smaller cell. Bigger cell is secondary oocyte, smaller cell is the first polar body. The first polar body is suspended in the space. What is the space called? Perivitaline space. 
in that space the first polar body is there and it's still attached to the secondary oocyte why is it an unequal division now the egg has to store the nutrients it has to provide nourishment for the sperm also so if it makes equal division then this one will get a sufficient food the polar body is not required for fertilization the polar body in humans will degenerate it doesn't have any role further it gets degenerated so that's why there is no role of the polar body the polar body is just required to do the reduction division so that it takes 23 chromosomes and the secondary oocyte takes 23 chromosomes so it will take it and it will move aside and it will degenerate it is suspended in the perivital in space whereas this secondary oocyte which is haploid so will be surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells zona pellucida is there it is surrounded by granulosa cells and these granulosa cells in the presence of the follicle stimulating hormone follicle stimulating hormone is acting on the granulosa cells no these granulosa cells will secrete a fluid that fluid makes cavities small small cavities all the small cavities will collapse they'll combine to make an anthrum here i'm showing small 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 follicles and here i uh, combine all the follicles to make a fluid fill space called anthrum in tertiary follicle what we can see is meiosis 1 division getting completed primary oocyte dividing into secondary oocyte and the first polar body under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone the granulosa cells have made some spaces fluid fill spaces right so these are the spaces and then we can see the theca layer is also distinguishing into outside cortex region called theca externa and the inner cells are called theca interna. These blue colored layers are the theca external layers and the red colored layers are theca interna layers. Such a developed follicle is called as tertiary follicle. Primary became secondary, secondary became tertiary. All this is under the FSH only, under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone only. Now this tertiary follicle will develop into a matured follicle. No much changes in matured follicle. Now, what happens in matured follicle means the secondary oocyte which is at the center, the secondary oocyte which is at the center will be pushed towards one corner, will be pushed towards one corner and the fluid filled, the fluid filled cavity will occupy the center. This will occupy the center and this is a vitalin membrane, this is perivitalin space, this is the non-cellular zona pellucida layer and these are the granulosa cells, corona radiata. The granulosa cells, they get arranged like a corona, crone-like cells and we call this as corona radiata. The granulosa cells at one corner, they are too much clustered together. At one corner, they are too much clustered together. That cluster of granulosa cells is called as cumulus ophius. That cluster of cells is called as cumulus ophius will be there here. And then the secondary oocyte is pushed towards one corner, anthrum is occupying the central space. Now, next what happens means luteinizing hormone in the mid of the cycle, in the mid of the cycle, 12 to 14 days or 13 to 14 day, 14th day, what happens? LH surge, high levels of LH, that LH will help in rupture of the follicle, that LH will rupture the matured graphene follicle. When it ruptures, all these layers are released out. When uh, these layers are ruptured, then the secondary oocyte, the secondary oocyte along with the polar body, along with the zona pellucida and corona radiata comes out. It comes out. So, one point we need to mention here, the matured graphene follicle. In the matured graphene follicle, meiosis 2 will start. Meiosis 1 got completed here and meiosis 2 will immediately start here. Meiosis 2 will start here, but again, here it gets arrested in metaphase 2. Prophase 1 will get completed, it gets arrested in metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, it gets arrested, it stays like that. And meanwhile, increased levels of LH will rupture the graphene follicle and the ova is released out. Actually, we tell it is ova, but in literal sense, it is the secondary oocyte which is getting released out. Ovulation, we tell and ova is getting released out. But it is exactly the ova na or meiosis 2 still did not complete and it is a secondary oocyte. It is secondary oocyte with the first polar body and this is the zona pellucida and this is a corona radiata all together. It is coming out. This is called ruptured graphene follicle. Now, this one is released from the ovary. This is ovary, right? This is ovary. From the ovary, so this secondary oocyte will be sent into the fallopian tube. Will be sent into the fallopian tube and here is a ruptured graphene follicle. The ruptured graphene follicle develops into a temporary endocrine tissue called corpus luteum. 
this ruptured graphene follicle this is a ruptured graphene follicle so it starts deposit it starts depositing lutein a fatty tissue it starts growing it starts deposition of lutein it starts growing and it develops into a temporary endocrine tissue which is called as corpus luteum so inside the ovary this is primary follicle this is secondary follicle this is a uh, tertiary mature graphene follicle and this is a ruptured graphene follicle from the ruptured graphene follicle ova is sent into the fallopian tube and this is developed into a temporary endocrine tissue called corpus luteum by deposition of lutein this temporary endocrine tissue starts producing estrogen uh, it starts producing estrogen and progesterone it will produce progesterone now this progesterone is produced by this estrogen is produced by the follicular cells here estrogen is produced that's what we told these are the follicular cells they secrete estrogen the follicular cells are producing estrogen the corpus luteum is producing progesterone estrogen and progesterone so they will maintain the condition suitable for fertilization and implantation so these two hormones will be maintained because corpus luteum is there and follicles are there now this ruptured graphene follicle turned into corpus luteum corpus luteum starts producing progesterone and what happens to the secondary oocyte this secondary oocyte it moves from the infundibulum to the ampulla region at the ampulla region during copulation the sperm travels this way and it will come into the fallopian tube if the sperm comes and hits the secondary oocyte if the sperm comes and hits the secondary oocyte then that shock will trigger the meiosis 2 we told here meiosis 2 got arrested in metaphase 2 stage right now here what happens the metaphase promoting factors which have stopped the meiosis here now after here when the sperm comes and hits it the metaphase promoting factors are degenerated nfas promoting factors will be initiated now that nfas promoting factors will uh, resume nfas to telophase 2 and then here after the sperm comes and triggers means at the time of fertilization meiosis 2 will get completed at the time of fertilization meiosis 2 will get completed and this secondary oocyte this secondary oocyte after the sperm comes it will divide into ootid or it will divide into ovum and the second polar body here is a first polar body and this is the second polar body the first polar body and the second polar body doesn't have any role and the ovum or ootid is near to the sperm only now it is near to the sperm so the male nucleus and the female nucleus male gamete and the female gamete will fuse at the ampulla isthmus junction this is the junction they fuse at the ampulla isthmus junction and result in the formation of diploid zygote it results in the formation of diploid zygote so fertilization happens in the fallopian tube fertilization happens in the fallopian tube now this fallopian tube fertilization it led to the formation of zygote the zygote starts its cleavage here itself in the fallopian tube and then it gets implanted in the uterus and it confirms pregnancy it, it confirms pregnancy if that doesn't happen if that doesn't happen what is the next scenario so the next scenario is if the sperm is not coming if the sperm is not coming if there is no sperm then it will be still in that stage only in the metaphase 2 stage only it stopped so it can come directly to the uterus it can directly come to the uterus and then it will start shedding down it will start shedding down so the when the eggs start degenerating when the eggs start degenerating then there's no role of this corpus luteum and progesterone then there's no role of progesterone corpus luteum and progesterone then when ovulation happens when uh, fertilization happens then the corpus luteum will produce progesterone if fertilization does not happen then if the egg starts degenerating then this corpus luteum also undergoes degeneration the corpus luteum also undergoes degeneration it will become small it will become small it has uh, degraded and what is this called this is called corpus albicans the degenerated corpus luteum okay so this is a degenerated corpus luteum which is called as corpus albicans then hormonal production stops the egg is shedding down the egg is discharging out so what is this it is the secondary oocyte which sheds out in the form of menstrual flow it sheds out in the form of menstrual flow on the 28th day of the cycle 
on the 28th day of the cycle. So, I think you understood clearly with the help of diagrams the process of oogenesis, right? So, the oogenesis is not as simple as it is spermatogenesis here. So, primordial follicle, primary follicle, secondary follicle, tertiary follicle, matured graphene follicle. In NCRT exercises, there is one question asking us to show us the diagrammatic representation of a matured graphene follicle. So, these are the layers of the matured graphene follicle. Theca externa, theca interna, basement membrane, granulosa cells, fluid filled anthrum, corona radiata and this is zona pellucida, first polar body, vitaline membrane, secondary oocyte, cumulus ophius. So, these are the regions of a mature graphene follicle. So, I will move aside, take a screenshot, then we will talk about the hormonal regulation of oogenesis. If any comments, if you need any clarity, kindly let me know, post the comments in the comment box. Right? Now, can I erase it? Shall we talk the hormone? Shall we talk about the hormonal regulation of oogenesis? Hope you understood detail. This is sectional view of the ovary, and this is oogenesis process. And here, I try to summarize the hormonal regulation of oogenesis. Now, in NCRT. 3.7, this is our picture. In 3.7, they showed us an ovary, an almond shaped structure. Now, it is having an ovarian germinal epithelium. This is ovarian germinal epithelium and inside we have ovarian stroma. The ovarian stroma is divided into peripheral cortex which is denser, which is having many cells in it and the inner one is called medulla. So, this region is called as medulla and this region is called as cortex. The cortex is dense and it is having many follicles inside. Now, this each ovary, it has 60 to 80,000 uh, primary follicles, right? All these dots children, all these green color dots represents primary follicles. How many follicles will be there in each ovary at the time of uh, puberty? Functional, 60 to 80,000 will be there. But in every month, 500 follicles will come. But these 500 follicles start their maturation under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone. But the one which has more receptors will only grow and becomes a matured graphene follicle. Here you can see four, three started in that only one is growing. It became primary follicle, here a secondary follicle and it became a tertiary follicle showing anthrum. And it growed and it became a matured graphene follicle. Now, on the 14th day of ovulation, so when the LH levels are at high, so it helps in rupture of the graphene follicle to release the egg. This is called ovulation, which happens on the mid of the menstrual cycle. The ova is released out. The ova is released out and this ruptured graphene follicle will turn into a temporary endocrine tissue called corpus luteum. So, this corpus luteum has yellow deposition of fat luteinization we will tell and it starts secreting progesterone. If the egg is fertilized, then the corpus luteum starts continuing secreting progesterone which is required for maintaining the pregnancy. If the ovum is not fertilized, if the ova start degenerating, then the corpus luteum also degenerates and it becomes corpus albicans. It becomes corpus albicans. So, the medulla is sparse. It is not having too much of dense of cells. It is just having blood vessels. So, this is a sectional view of an ovary surrounded by germinal epithelium layer. So, which is having ovarian stroma inside, ovarian cortex is thick and the middle part is ovarian medulla. And this is the oogenesis which they have given in 3 point figure number 3.8, right. So, we know that the ovary contains oogonia. These oogonia, first they will undergo multiplication phase. They undergo mitotic uh, differentiation and they will become many oogonia. They will divide, divide, divide till 7 million they will divide, right. So, this is a division stage which happens in the fetal life only. The chromosome number in the oogonia over mother cell will be deployed only. Now, it has entered growth phase. See, I increased the size. So, the oogonia now became primary oocyte and it will become primary follicle. Now, primary follicles will be there in the fetal stage itself and she is born with the primary follicle. 
she is born with the primary oocytes. Primary oocyte has started meiosis but gets arrested. So, then from birth in the childhood till she reaches a puberty, this primary oocyte, primary follicles will degenerate. Follicular atresia continues. And once the puberty starts, when LH and FSH levels are high, then what happens? The primary follicle becomes secondary, tertiary, mature graphene follicle will complete its meiosis 1 division and it produces secondary oocyte and the first polar body. Since it is meiosis 1 reduction division, the chromosomal number 46 is distributed into 23 here and 23 here. In the first polar body, one set of chromosomes and in the secondary oocyte, we have another set of chromosomes. Now, this secondary oocyte will start meiosis 2 division, but it gets arrested in metaphase division. After the entry of the sperm only, meiosis 2 will continue and we will get the ovum, which is called ova or ooted, which is haploid and the second polar body, which is also having 23 chromosomes. So, this part is from puberty to the reproductive life, right? So, they will ask us, Ugonia, ploidy 46, primary oocyte, primary oocyte will also have 46 chromosomes because meiosis did not complete, right? So, when primary becomes secondary oocyte, then it will become 23. Then when secondary oocyte undergoes uh, meiosis 2, then meiosis 2 is nothing but mitotic division. So, chromosome number will be the same again. So, this is fetal life. At birth, she is born with primary oocytes and primary follicles. In childhood, the primary follicle starts degenerating and in puberty, whatever is left out under the influence of the hormones, now they become secondary oocytes and after the entry of the sperm, ovum will be released out. Children, this is a process of oogenesis. And coming to the hormonal regulation in oogenesis, coming to hormone regulation in oogenesis, we tell pituitary gland is a master of endocrine gland and pituitary is under the control of hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is in the brain, right? So, here is hypothalamus. From hypothalamus through a stalk called infundibulum. This is hypothalamus from that through a stalk called infundibulum, pituitary hangs. This is the anterior pituitary lobe and this is the posterior pituitary lobe. Hypothalamus at the time of puberty, it produces a hormone called GnRH, gonadotrophin releasing hormone. This gonadotrophin straight ahead comes into the anterior pituitary. Then the anterior pituitary produces two gonadotrophins called luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. What is the role of LH in females? So, I told you like on the 14th day when the LH levels are high, we call it as an LH surge. The graphene follicle ruptures, ovulation happens. So, that means luteinizing hormone helps in ovulation. It helps in ovulation. Now, after ovulation, when the ova is released, the ruptured graphene follicle turned into a temporary endocrine tissue called corpus luteum. So, this luteinizing hormone, it takes care of the ruptured graphene follicle also and it helps in the development of the corpus luteum. It maintains the corpus luteum. So, the functions of luteinizing hormone are ovulation on the 14th day of the menstrual cycle and to maintain the corpus luteum, right? Now, function of follicle stimulating hormone, we know follicle stimulating hormone helps in development of the follicles, maturation of the follicles. It develops the primary follicle into secondary, into tertiary, into matured graphene follicle. This follicular development is under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, helps in follicular development and maturation. Now, what are the roles of together LH and FSH? Both of them stimulate the ovarian follicles. All these are ovarian follicles. They stimulate the ovarian follicles. Ovarian follicles contains granulosa cells, follicular cells. Those follicular cells of the follicle will secrete the female sex hormone called estrogen under the influence of LH and FSH. Both together will help to stimulate the ovarian follicles to secrete the female sex hormone called estrogen. So, this is the hormonal functions. Now, if the estrogen levels are high, what happens? If the estrogen levels are high, it can stop its own production. It can stop its own production by showing a negative feedback. This is negative regulation. This is called feedback regulation. It can stop its own production by acting on the anterior pituitary and by acting on the hypothalamus. It can go act on the anterior pituitary, stop the production of LH and FSH. It can go act on the hypothalamus, stop the release of GnRH. So, this is called feedback regulation. Since the estrogen production is stopped, it is negative regulation, it is negative regulation. In the same manner, this is corpus luteum. Here is corpus luteum, a temporary endocrine tissue. It produces 
progesterone which helps in maintaining pregnancy the corpus luteum the corpus luteum produces progesterone now if the progesterone levels are high what is the condition if the progesterone levels are high it can stop its own production again this progesterone will go back act on the anti repetitory will go back act on the hypothalamus and again this is feedback regulation again this is feedback regulation it stops its own synthesis high levels of progesterone stops its own synthesis by acting on hypothalamus and antipitary to stop the production of gnrh lh and fsh high levels of estrogen also has the same mechanism of feedback regulation and again this corpus luteum can also secrete a hormone called inhibin this inhibin from the corpus luteum it can also inhibit lh and fsh release it's going on acting on gnrh and antipitary so it can stop the production of lh and fsh children this is the hormonal regulation of oogenesis so in the next class we will talk about the differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis and the structure of the ovum we'll see it in the next lecture hope the content is informative if you like the lecture so like share and subscribe to my channel any comments so you can post them in the comment box thank you